Hello lovely people, my name is Emma and today I am doing the History Challenge book tag. Now this is a tag that I have co-created with my wonderful co-hosts. So that is Jenny from Bookish Shenanigans, Justin from A Ghost Reader and Justin from Triumphal Reads. Um, we created this to highlight some various history books um, in honour of the History Challenge which started technically today at time of filming but by the time you guys are seeing this it started yesterday. Um, so Justin, in fact both of the Justins, the Justin Collective have already um, made their ones of these so I'll link theirs down below um, but we did all make this together so it's 10 questions talking about our um, like relationship with history and history books in general question one is what first got you into history and to be honest I think it's something which I've kind of low level had an interest in interest in for most of my life but I've only really recently sort of noticed that being a common thread through a lot of my interests. Um, I liked the horrible histories books as a kid and I was very very interested in art history. Um, my dad's very into art so there's kind of a connection there. For me we used to go to quite a lot of museums when I was quite young and then as I was getting older and reading more non-fiction books I realised that there was a common thread of like art history and history of science and ideas throughout them but it's only been really recently that I've kind of tweaked that they all come under the banner of history and also I've been um, kind of exploring other history topics and that's kind of um, one often leads to the other I don't know if people other people find this in non-fiction is when you when you read about a topic that you're suddenly interested in it kind of sends out a spider web of like it mentions five or six other things and you're like oh I'd love to learn more about them so you do and then they also create five or six other things and it kind of exponentially your interests seem to grow and the non-fiction topics you want to read about seems to grow um so kind of a, a constant but also a a reinvigorated new interest shall we say Question two is what is your favourite history book or author? Now I have mentioned Rise and Fall of the Dinosaurs by Steve Brusate, which I always pronounce his surname wrong, sorry Steve, um, countless times on my channel so that is one of my favourites um, but I wanted to, to mention a slightly different book today and that is Tamed by Alice Roberts. I read this early on this year, it is a book on um, prehistory, it's still prehistoric and it's looking at the 10 species that have changed our world through human influence on them where they have been either tamed or domesticated or cultivated in the case of some plants. I think this is such a, a wonderful easy read um, which breaks down the different areas so nicely. It also has really interesting looks going forward to um, implications on on the changes that we've made and like how humans are still domesticating things and still having influences on certain um, plants and animals whether it be things like GM crops and just generally kind of genetic modification as a as an overall thing um, really wonderful really interesting and I am going to be doing a full review on this that should be coming out in the next week or so so I'll talk more about it there but it's a wonderful wonderful read the next question is what is your most anticipated history book that you have not read yet for me it's one that I don't own yet currently and that is Medical Apartheid by Harriet A. Washington. This is looking at the um, explicit and implicit biases that there are within the medical field both currently and also historically um, which have racist sentiments and are um, actively to the detriment of black people and it's one that I have on my shelf The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks which is looking at um, cancer cells but also the mistreatment of Henrietta um, and her the lack of consent gained who, who was a black woman whose cells had been used without her or her family's permission um, but the Medical Apartheid book is looking at that but a much bigger and more broad expansive look both in terms of some of the injustices that have been done historically for um, black people who have been kind of experimented on and treated as as lab subjects um, without their consent and in very uh, awful power dynamic situations and then also going forward how that impacts how the medical community interacts with the black community today. Um, it's one that looks like it's going to be absolutely so harrowing but I really want to pick it up and read it alongside Henrietta Lacks so that that way I've got this kind of wider bigger picture but then also this very focused in specific example of this happening. Um, so so I'm really interested in reading. I nearly said excited and it always feels like it's an inappropriate word to use for a topic that's so serious but I am excited to read that one and it is an anticipated read that I want to get by and get to soon. The next question is what is your favourite time period and why? What book do you want to read or have you read about it? When we say time period in any of these tags feel free to change like sub in um, just subject matter and topic if you're not somebody who reads a particular time period and rather kind of a particular thing like history of science or whatever. Um, it's no history, it's no secret on this channel that I love prehistoric books so uh, prehistoric paleontology is definitely my favourite area in history. For one that I've read that I really enjoyed is The Ends of the World by 
by Peter Brannan. This is looking at the five major extinction events that have happened in Earth's history, but in doing so it's also a really wonderful quick snapshot of what was happening on our planet between those extinction events and really helped to open my eyes to the different possibilities of things to learn about in paleontology um, outside of just dinosaurs because there's some really cool stuff happening in the other um, eras that this planet has gone through. And because of that book, I actually picked up recently Trilobites. Um, there's an exclamation mark there. I should have shouted that at you. This is by Richard Forty. And Trilobites were um, kind of the, the predominant life force that were on the planet, I think in the Cambrian era. Oh, please don't quote me. Um, lower lower Paleozoic, um, which was kind of pre-dinosaurs. And they're really, really freaking cool. So they were mentioned a bit in the ends of the world. And this is one that I want to get to next or soon as the next kind of paleontology book I'm going to read, because I think this is going to be super interesting and I'd love to learn more about them. I always thought trilobites were just kind of similar to the, to the trilobite looking Pokemon. It turns out there's huge variations in the species and loads of different subspecies. And there's like several thousand different trilobites out there. So I've got a lot to learn about. Them. The next question is what time period would you like to learn more about and what books do you want to read or have you read about it? So um, I've kind of got a couple of different answers here. Um, I have been meaning to learn more about Italian history for quite a while um, and by quite a while I actually mean for like it's been sort of a vague interest of mine for maybe even over a decade now and I just haven't ever really prioritised it. So a book that I have for that is The Medici, Godfathers of the Renaissance by Paul Strathern. And the reason why I want to learn about this family in particular is when I was a teenager I was reading a series of books called The Stravaganza by Mary Hoffman, which is a parallel universe where the Dicini are the big Italian powerhouse family, but they are modelled very, very closely on the Medici. So it was something I was interested in as kind of a teenager and a kid, and I never actually went and looked up the original family that they were based off of, but I love that series of books. And I was reminded of them as an adult recently and was like, I have to go and learn more about these. So I have this on my shelf and I'm really interested in reading it soon. More recently, and I do mean literally in the past like couple of weeks, I just finished Mexican Gothic, which um, is a gothic thriller that is set in Mexico um, and it's like a historical thriller, but it mentions in it the Mexican Revolution. And I realised that my knowledge of both not only Mexico, but Latin America in general is absolutely appalling. So I kind of went on a little bit of a hunt. And one thing that's on my TBR, that um, like my general want to reads list is Silver, Sword and Stone, Three Crucibles, um, of the Latin American story by Marie Arana. This looks so interesting and the three different things, it's kind of focusing in on a particular person from history that represent um, exploitation and kind of money and finance, violence and also religion being sort of, the Marie's arguing as being kind of some of the three major forces that have um, shaped Latin America to what it is today. So I'm really interested because of uh, reading Mexican Gothic, I would love to grab and pick like buy and pick up that book very soon and I'd love to learn more about Latin America because it's something that I know so little about it's it's almost embarrassing um so in fact it's no almost it is embarrassing I need to learn more about that so that's going to be a time period that I'd love to to pick up very soon uh the next question is what is your favorite person in history and what book do you want to read or have you read about it so at the moment I am reading about Eleanor of Aquitaine who was uh, one of, according to the, the subtitle of the book I'm reading, one of history's most powerful women. You can quibble that in the comments down below if you fancy. She was the mother of Richard the Lionheart, she was very very influential in both British and French history. Um, she fathered, uh, so mothered, didn't father, mothered uh, a whole host of sons. She was linked with one of the Louis and also one of the Henrys and um, was instrumental in some of the Crusades as well. So this very powerful woman who had a very long life and I'm reading a uh, historical fiction trilogy about her that really maps closely onto her life. So book one is The Summer Queen by Elizabeth Chadwick. Um, I've also read The Winter Crown and the next one I need to read is The Autumn Throne. So I'm really interested in her at the moment and I think that she's very cool. One person I'd also love to read more about is Josephine Baker. I was listening to a podcast about her recently and thought that she sounded fascinating and I've not been able to find any books about her in particular that look good and have good reviews there's a lot that say that they're just they're very biased or um not very well structured but one that has kind of appeared in my searching is when paris sizzled which is about the 1920s in paris and it is about a collection of people which also includes josephine baker at that time so i think that this would be a good way of kind of jumping into that that one is by marie 
McAuliffe, I believe. Um, so I am intrigued by that one fairly soon. The next question is, what history topic would you like to see more fiction or non-fiction books about? I mean, generally it would be lovely to um, see more from world history that isn't so uh, Eurocentric, but I'm aware that also I think there is a lot more out there that I haven't been actually actively looking for so that is on me as a reader and a consumer to go and find those and that's something that I am trying to do at the moment. One thing, one topic that I have searched for and have been unable to find anything on is paleobotany. Um, so I love paleontology, we know that, I've said it multiple times in this video already, but I really want to learn more about um, paleobotany and the plants that um, have kind of both how we can know about them and kind of the, the scientific principles that govern paleontology in a botany context but also just generally what was going on with the plant world back then and how that sort of evolved when did the first trees appear and things like that. Um, it's been loosely touched on in some of the other books I've read but I've not found a book specifically about it so um, I would be really interested in learning more. It was loosely touched on in Lab Girl by Hope Joren, um because she is a paleobotanist and that's something that she ends up specialising in but that one is a memoir about her life which I'm loosely touches on her work rather than being about paleobotany directly so I would love to learn more about that but I've been unable to find anything that isn't a really like bulky horrible textbook so <laughs> that would be one that I would love to know more of. Question eight is what non non book resources do you enjoy when learning about history? So I love podcasts for history and I'm actually going to be doing a full um, eight that are great recommendations video for my favourite history podcast and that will be coming out in the next week or so. So I'm not going to be mentioning any of them because I don't want to spoil that video. Instead I'm going to mention a YouTube channel that I really enjoy and that's the PBS Eons channel. I will link it down below um, but this one specialises, PBS I think is an American channel, um, we don't have it here over the in the UK and I don't know a crazy amount about it but basically they do these short videos that talk about various things from eons ago so it is focused on paleontology it has some really lovely ones that look at things like they're always phrased with these sort of sentences of like um why did Spinosaurus have such a big fin or like how did the T-Rex get so big and like things like that and I think that they're generally really really interesting and they don't just cover dinosaurs they cover the whole range of paleontology in general so it's a really great starting place if you're not too sure what bit that you'd be interested in and they all tend to be around the like 10 to 20 minute mark which I find really good for YouTube videos for me. The Next question is, tell us just a fun or interesting historical fact or quote. And I don't actually have a fact as such, but what I do have is um, just something that I've been reading about recently in one of the latest paleontology books I've been reading is a particular species of pterosaur that more people need to know existed because this thing is freaking terrifying. It's called the Hatsigopteryx, I believe, and it's also linked to the Quetzalcoatl. Cotolerix, something like that. I'm gonna put a photo here. These things were just like your normal pterosaur, so think like a pterodactyl, but they were the size of a giraffe with a beak that nearly hit the floor. Like these things are huge and they were one of the apex predators in some of the islands that Europe was kind of where Europe is now, that's what the landmass really was at the time, was this sort of um, mass of archipelagos. And they were some of the apex predators on a variety of different islands there. Um, absolutely terrifying and should have been featured more heavily in some of the Jurassic Park movies because holy crap can you imagine running into one of those in real life so that frankly awful creature I'm so pleased has existed in the world and that we kind of know a bit about and they're my new favorite dinosaur at the moment um literally was reading about them last night so freaking cool um so yeah and then the final one is actually to do a shout out of some videos but I've um and some other channels but for some reason in my notes I also have written down the book Archaeology from Space How Future Shapes Our Past by Sarah Parnak or Parkak um I don't know what that was supposed to be in the answer to so my notes are terrible but this is a book that I really want to read um <laughs> so I might as well mention it here it's a history book looking at our interactions with archaeology and how um our work with space travel and the ability to set up satellites and various things in space has meant that we've been able to get a far more macro look at archaeology being able to see things like depressions in the ground and being able to do scan work that then means that we don't like we get a stronger sense of the bigger picture and we're not just so zoomed in and we can also spot where further study and further investigation might be needed to be and there was an amazing um 
Infinite Monkey Cage podcast episode that I will try and link down below if I can find it. I can't remember the exact title of it, but Sarah was on it with Alice Roberts, who wrote Tamed that I mentioned earlier, and the two of them were discussing advances in archaeology and the fact that space is really changing the game for that, um, but also some of the ways that they're um, changing how we're understanding archaeology and trying to bring in different perspectives on um, archaeological remains. So it's a really, really cool Infinite Monkey Cage podcast episode that I'll link down below. Now we're going to get onto some channels, and it's just shout out another booktube channel that also reads history and I actually have four to talk about um, which is faintly absurd but I never do shout outs on this so I thought I'd do it properly this time. So brand new to booktube recently is Katie Davies. Her first video is actually a history challenge TBR. I will link all of these down below. Katie's absolutely lovely. I'd say definitely go check her out. Like I said she's brand new um, so please go give her a load of support but she reads a nice weird variety of books. She's been a huge supporter of my channel for quite a while and I'm really excited to see what she creates. Also, I was watching Literally Smitten recently. She's also put out a TBR. All of these people are taking part in the History Challenge. Um, I've just found her channel very recently, so I've not been watching a crazy amount. But her TBR was really cool and interesting, and she says that she is quite a big history reader anyway. On a similar note is also Rosie Cockshut, who is wearing the nicest lipstick colour ever in her TBR video, and she's also got a really nice range of different books, and I think that, that looks really, really interesting there. So again, I'm new to her channel, but I can't wait to go check her out. And then there's also Karen Chronicles, who is a little bit more established on Booktube, um, but all of these people are under a thousand subscribers, by the way, so please don't go, do go show your support. Um, Karen is uh, actually studying history at university, I believe, and again, her TBR is wonderful, and she has a lot of videos that are not just about her reading, but also her university life. So the two combined is really nice. So those are four different channels that are all quite small that do read history, um, so please do go check them out. I think that they're all wonderful. Um, I've only watched a few of their videos, but I'm really excited to check out what other content they're gonna be creating over the next few weeks. So that is it from me. Um, everybody who I've mentioned has been tagged. Please do check out all of our co-hosts as well for the readathon and if you are a person who likes history books and wants to do this tag as well please feel free to um that's gonna be it have a wonderful reading two weeks enjoy the readathon and i'll chat to you soon bye